Welcome to Thursday, everybody. Uh, hello, Anne, Gavin, Austin, Kay, uh, anyone else who's about. Good morning to you. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, everybody. Uh, lots of fun and games again today, I see. <laughs> the fun doesn't stop, which is what we want uh, as retail traders, a bit of good volatility to get our teeth stuck into. Um, so get stuck into it, we will right now. <clears throat> Let's start with um, what's happened overnight yesterday uh, and this morning. Um, obviously, the big thing yesterday was the US CPI data um, came in hotter than expected, much hotter than expected on the headline. Um, and the core didn't dip as much as expected. Um, <clears throat> there we can see the numbers there, 9.1 uh, from 8.8 .8 expected, up from 9.6%. So a, a big beat there. And that core, as mentioned, coming in at 5.9%, was expected to fall from 6% to 5.7%. So it didn't fall as much uh, as expected. And the, the core is something I mentioned yesterday um, that we need to keep an eye on because that's that's what the Fed is really going to focus on as well to see whether the volatile stuff and inflation feed through into the more domestically led uh, inflation data. But that wasn't really the main news yesterday the main news yesterday was the bank of canada going a surprise 100 pip uh hike um 75 was expected they went the full 100 um now that was uh, obviously a bit of a shock enough for the cad um and we saw it uh, dropping uh from the 130s to initially to, to 129.50s a few questions were being raised about why it didn't go further uh, based on the size of the hike there. Um, but what's become evident since that and, and why the Bank of Canada was, has been such a big trigger for, for the moves we're seeing right now is that it's raised expectations for the Fed to go 100 pips at their July meeting. Um, it's really shaken up the market a bit um, and turned everyone really hawkish. We've got banks coming up and up in their gains, uh, their expectations for the Fed. Uh, Numura came out with the 100 pip call uh, not too long after the, the, the Bank of Japan uh, yesterday afternoon. Interest rate probabilities, didn't matter what metric you look at, whether it was uh, Fed swaps or the CME Fed watch, um, priced in an 80% probability uh, of a Fed hiking in July, 100 basis points. We also had um, lots of speakers out overnight as well. We had uh, Bostick. Daily, Mesta, uh, Barking, um, all coming out. Um, not Some of them were, were not talking about 100 pip hikes, but a lot of them were, were mainly plugged into their, their same thing. So I'll, I'll just uh, call up some of the things we've got here because I've got it on. Let's put it there for you. We've got it on the news here. A little bit of review uh, I did earlier this morning. So Daily came out. Sticking to a 75 pip call, Mester said inflation is too high and doesn't suggest going smaller than the June hike. Um, and the Fed will need to go well beyond the neutral rate. Barkin said core inflation is too high. Bostick was questioned um, not long after the, the BOC or, or uh, later in the afternoon. Um, and I was asked specifically about 100 pip hike and he said everything is in play. Um, and there you can see the 100 pip expectations running, I think they're over 80% uh, this morning. Um, now, we are heading to the Fed blackout. Um, this is the period uh, where the Fed communication machine shuts down um, for roughly two weeks ahead of the next FOMC. Um, so from Saturday, there'll be no Fed heads coming out and, and commenting or, or anything like that specifically on monetary policy. They can come out and talk about other things. They can have other scheduled meetings and appearances, you know, maybe talking about local, regional issues. Um, but on direct monetary policy, they're entering the blackout period for Saturday. So really, this is the, the last knockings for hearing Fed members coming out and reacting to this latest market jump in expectations. Um, now, today, on the scheduled speakers, we've only got Waller. Um, and tomorrow, again, scheduled, we've got Bostick. So we've only got two scheduled. Now, the, that means that these guys have got booked appearances. That doesn't mean we won't get others popping up on the, the media wires um, and, and other places that are not scheduled big events. 
Um, so this could be a, a busy couple of days if we start to get a ton of Fed speakers. Are they going to reinforce the market's view of 100 pips um, for July? Um, if we take Waller, for example, his last comments, which were 6th of July, I think, so just over a week ago, he was saying he's pumping for 75 pips in July, 50 in September. Is he going to change it when he speaks later today? Is he going to go for the 100? Is he going to move up his September to 75? Um, all these changes are going to feed into to what we're seeing today. Um, obviously, dollar yen is is taking it in the neck. Um, we'll talk about that in a, in a moment. Uh, some interesting things going on there. But the market really is getting 100 pip fever. Um, and this is what we've got to deal with right now. And it's one of the reasons particularly why the loonie um as i say had a fairly decent dip let's get into the short term one so initially we got the the dip as we say from the the boc all the way down it went to 29.50 first um then it pumped a bit lower then we had a little secondary move lower and now it's all the way up and in fact been testing the big 3080e level we've been uh, pointing out so Expectations are running very hot at the moment. Um, we'll look at the prices in greater detail shortly. Um, just some of the other news. Uh, Italy, um, there's a bit of political mess going on over there. Looks like the government is heading to a no confidence vote. Um, this was something uh, we highlighted last night uh, from our, one of our roommates, um, Five Magics. He's Italian and, and keeps his ear really to the ground there. And he was warning last night that um the five star party is set to vote against um some economic measures fiscal measures um that are, are being put down by draghi which in turn would lead draghi to potentially resign because if he can't carry on as as with this coalition government um he can't the government can't function so to call the bluff he's putting up for a no confidence vote a government no confidence vote and that's what we're heading towards. But the likelihood is that five stars will actually back the government in the no confidence vote. But that also means they then can still vote against the package. So it's it's getting the best of both worlds. Um, but there is still a small risk uh, that the, the no confidence vote um, fails, if you like, in, in Draghi's sense. Uh, and, a, and a vote of no confidence is called for. Uh, and passes and then we potentially head into towards snap elections um that's going to be a bit of a political mess we're going to have to watch uh, the those bond spreads um, because they're going to be greatly af affected and this is going to be one of the things obviously that's part of the ecb's fragmentation tool uh, watching spreads so this might be a big test for what happens when we're going to get these uh, spread differentials so a bit of a risk there for italy um some of the other data not too much out overnight. We had uh, a very strong reading from the Aussie jobs. Um, employment change, a big jump there. 30K expected it was up 88.4K. Um, participation rate was up as well. Um, and the unemployment rate came down. So, again, I mentioned this with the NFP, looking at the participation rate and factoring it into the unemployment rate. So that means more people came in to the jobs market looking for work and still the unemployment rate went down. What can happen is more people enter it, the unemployment rate can go up um, because more people are officially unemployed and coming looking for work. So that looks pretty strong there, dropping to 3.5%, even with the participation rate rising. Um, just some of the other data points, uh, Sweden CPI, that came in hot as well, 8.7 versus 7.3 prior um, year on year. So inflation, inflation, inflation spreading around the world. Um, the only place it's not, of course, is Japan. And that's what I'm going to let Kay come into now, because um, obviously we've seen another big leg up in dollar yen today. Um, although it's now just uh, having a pretty volatile dip off the, the highs there. But comments out from uh, the usual suspects, Kay. Yeah, exactly. We, uh, we had uh, an, some more... Um, Comments from uh, MOF officials, um, Matsuno, the, the, the latest one, uh, they, they are worried about uh, about this uh, this yen weakness. Okay, they've been saying that for a long while, but 
um, as I was talking about it in, in, the, in the chat room, it starts to be uh, speedy. So as we have been saying for, for a long time, speed is um, of a higher importance than, uh, than actually the, the level. Although we are approaching levels, uh, we can, uh, undi it's undeniable to say that this 140, 145 zone is going to be very important. Because as a matter of fact, it's the last time that uh, Japan actually sold dollars, dollar yen, uh, so to speak, which was, I think, during Mr. Sakakibara, uh, uh, Mr. Yen uh, uh, Stenner. And uh, that's the last time that they uh, they really sold uh, dollar yen. And we are we are approaching those uh, those levels again. Um, if you want, I can take the screen quickly to talk about the end, and um, I'll I'll talk about um, what would possibly happen uh, during an intervention. So, okay, let me grab that screen. Yeah. Now, just quickly, oh, there's uh, yeah. there was a comment out just before we started the show from Kashida saying he's starting up yeah. nine nuclear reactors. I is. is is that behind the dip? Do you think less reliance on oil? The, the, I, I think it's it may be behind the dip indeed because um, it's been since since the big quake and the Fukushima uh, uh, nuclear reactor melting down, um, they they have closed most of the uh, the nuclear reactors in uh, in Japan. They they didn't comp they didn't completely decommission them, but they closed them for let's say indefinite maintenance or so. Um, since then, I think only a couple or, or four or so have been, uh, have been restarted, but just here and there at various corners of, uh, of Japan. Um, but the, the safety checks now, it, it takes a lot longer to get through the safety checks than before Fukushima, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, so, but that news should, in theory, be a bit positive again because uh, it, it would reduce the um, massive need for uh, uh, um, importing energy uh, into Japan. So, in my opinion, it would have, a, it should have at least an impact on on the yen. Um, as I was saying, it takes a, it takes a while before um, those will be uh, will be restarted effectively. Um, but um, yeah, and the market will uh, will of course uh, take it into uh, uh, into account uh, earlier because the market always front runs uh, events, right? Um, just as a level, um, besides that, we have a. This is the uh, uh, this is the from the lows after Fukushima, and then the Abe. Uh, I call it the Abe rally. This one from 2012 into uh, 2015 is really the, the, the Abe rally in, uh, in the dollar yen. Um, we have an extension here at uh, 139.42, which has been exactly tagged the, this morning. So um, I think also it's a, it's a quite uh, a quite important uh, tech level. But then, um, the, yeah, we were talking about the speed and then we saw we opened at around what this morning, 138, uh, perhaps a, around here, or even or even a bit lower. Um, in the dollar yen, where did we open uh, this morning? So, really, dollar yen started to 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 ramp higher uh, after the Fed speakers um, uh, overnight. Uh, especially, there was like around and just before midnight our time. Uh, you had uh, daily or Dali, you had uh, Mester, you had, uh, uh, yeah, before Bostik was earlier, but then we had Mester and, and Dali. Sorry? Arkin was the other one. And Arkin as well, yeah, right right around there. So that that's really when, when Dali in took off. And uh, at the same time, uh, there was a bit of uh, warning about uh, new COVID cases and... Um, uh, and also Reuters article out that um, more and more uh, Japanese firms were going to uh, to pass through um, the price hikes to to the consumer, which is a fairly new event as well as well in Japan because as we know uh, they they don't dare to to uh, pass on price hikes because there's always an an immense 
uh, discussion and, and, and battle about Japanese wages and the government is always pushing, pushing firms to, to raise them by three to five percent every year. But we, as we have seen over the, over the years, the, the Japanese real wages have, have barely gone up, if not even declined. Um, but then back to the back to the levels. And uh, today I wanted to talk about something. Um, it's no use to talk about it too early. But today, looking at the speed uh, of the move, we have done over 300 points since the start of the week alone. So I wanted to talk about what the, the various possibilities would be for a possible, because we have to put everything really on the caution. I'm not saying that they will. Uh, but the possible intervention uh, of the uh, Bank of Japan, which will be ordered by the MOF. Bank of Japan does not take make decisions on the yen. The, the Bank of Japan in, uh, um, applies the, the, the monetary policy and looks at uh, stability, inflation and stuff, but they do not make decisions on the, on the value of the, of the Japanese yen. So that decision will come from the MOF. And... Let's assume that looking at the speed, looking at the levels close to 114 dollar yen, probably blowing uh, blowing through in uh, if it goes at this speed in before the end of the week, um, what would be the possibilities for them intervening? So, first of all, uh, of what we have seen traditionally when I was in banks, uh, uh, they they have various steps to warn the market before they intervene. And I have not seen the last step yet, which is to talk about uh, them uh, identifying speculative moves in the market. If, if they come to the conclusion that uh, the moves that we see in the market are not mainly dri driven by higher energy, not mainly driven by higher commodities, et cetera, et cetera, um, or inflation elsewhere, um, um, then, then they they will conclude that uh, they have uh, seen uh, speculative moves, and that should be the last step. If they come up with such a comment, interventions are really not far off. And then they could do like another uh, another one, which we were talking about just this morning, when when the dollar came off from uh, 139.40 to to 13870 uh, in in quick uh, in quick order. <clears throat> The possibility of uh, warning the market is to send the BOJ out to go check rates, which they uh, traditionally would do with the Japanese mega banks or the agent banks. They have like a list of, um, so you have the four four Japanese mega banks, Bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi, uh, Sumitomo, etc., and um, then they have like an, a list of agent banks. The Bank of Japan traditional, traditionally traditionally. Um, intervenes through those banks and rarely through uh, the market uh, themselves. But they, they, um, they could, of course, because they, uh, since uh, about maybe 10 years ago, they do have access to the electronic systems in the market. So they, they, they may make, take the decision to intervene themselves, but mostly they would typically call up the banks and intervene. So they do... Uh, First of all, they check the rates, which they will do via the mega banks, and then uh, you traditionally see dollar yen drop 50 to 100 points just because they're checking they're checking rates. But we should see confirmation of that via our headline, because they they don't really want to do it in a secretive manner uh, at the time of doing it. Yes, but uh, later on they will uh, send it out as a warning to the to the market. So we should see the the headline. If we go any further and if we, go, we, we get to, to real interventions, there's a couple of various uh, possibilities that they will, um, that they will uh, uh, use. So first of all is to go and sit on the offer. They, go, they can go and sit on the offer to smooth the, smoothen the, the rise. So they will give orders to the, to the Japanese mega banks. They will give orders to, uh, if needed, to their uh, agent banks. Um, out of um, out of experience, when 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 you're an agent bank, you would typically get an, an order saying, um, I'm, "I'm let's say call it 140. I'm 140 to figure offered him 500 500 dollars and call me when 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 500 million dollars, of course, and call me when done." And they would give that order to to the mega banks and to their agent banks. So uh, one can imagine that. Um, 
they would do like a, a, a they would go and sit on the offer uh, for for about five billion dollars at the time. That's that's a, a real possibility. But they might just go there, test uh, not to test the waters, but not to to completely block the move. Uh, and and they might say when once it's done. Um, Call me back, and and then we will give you either a new offer or uh, at the same rate or higher up. So that is one of the possibilities, and and usually they would, and which is which was at least in those days quite a big gift. They would tell the, the those banks to only call them back when the five hundred million are done. So you can sell four hundred million on the offer if it drops 30, 40 points. You can buy them back and not even call call the bank of Japan. That was how it used to be. I don't. I don't know how it is right now. So, the the um, the other thing that they could do in the same uh, in the same style is to call up um, the BIS, which is the, the the bank of the central bank of central banks, right? And they could give uh, the BIS similar kind of uh, similar kind of offers, um, um, but but instead of using only the 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 mega banks and the agent banks. They could they they could use the PIS as well to give it uh, more weight and to have a uh, a foot in uh, in Europe as well uh, because the PIS can can obviously watch orders twenty four hours a twenty four hours a day which they 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 sometimes did in the past uh, whether it be for them for the even for the S and P or for the PIS has a bigger trading desk than than we can uh, actually imagine. So the third thing was would would be that. They go and sit on the offer themselves. Um, so they go through the electronic uh, training systems like EBS and, and things, and, and they just go sit on the offer themselves. So <clears throat> the second possibility is that they really had enough of it and they want to put a cap in, in, in place. So they would call up the banks and just go and sell. Um, they would call up the banks typically in, in, in the Former days, it would be like 50 to 100 million dollars a shot, and they, they would go like, uh, "What's your bid in a this is?" And they would actually give the reason. The the it, it's it's a very, let's say, um, coordinated uh, way of of intervention that they have. They would actually give the reason. They would say, uh, "Okay, this is a bank of Japan for uh, reasons of uh, intervention or so, blah blah blah." They would use a sentence. And they say, like, show me a bid in 50 dollar yen. Of course, dollar yen would collapse to 100 points before they even get a rate. Um, but but that's the the way they could try to really put a stop to it and and intervene directly themselves. What they and then the scenario can be the same. They could do it via the mega banks. They could do it via, uh, via the agent banks. They could uh, to the BIS. They won't ask for a, a rate, but they, they they probably would just ask for the fill and then uh, do it like that themselves and do it for as long as they judge necessary for the, the market to, to really uh, start, to, um, start, start to reverse or, or to at least stop in the direction where it is uh, right then. The last, um, the last thing that I want to talk about, and that's going to be possibly the most interesting for us as traders to know, for those who have not uh, any uh, uh, who have never seen any central bank interventions or uh, and, and for sure not Bank of Japan interventions, is they could use other central banks like the, like we, we've seen, uh, uh, not necessarily like coordinated, but they will give the order them, them, themselves. I don't think we will see coordinated interventions now, but of course everything conditional because euro is at parity. To stop the dollar's rise because the the U.S. Treasury won't uh, won't accept it right now to to go into coordinated interventions in my opinion, but we should we could see uh, Bank of Japan giving orders to other central banks and I'm going to take in uh, the example of the ECB because the Fed for if they would give the the, the order to the Fed to sell dollar yen in, in New York time zone that would be okay because it would just be straight dollar yen, but I want to talk particularly about the ECB. And the ECB, that's going to be the most tricky intervention uh, that we can possibly see because ECB, their mandate is, or, or their, their, their currency is euro and not dollars. So ECB, what they would do, and, and, and which has been seen in the past, so 
they, they can do two things. They can say on behalf of the Bank of Japan, what's your price in dollar yen uh, in, in, in such and such and such. But what we have seen in the past is that they would call up the European banks and intervene in euro yen. So well, <laughs> and that's going to be the tricky part because if if they, it's okay to that the dollar yen goes down, but by selling euro yen, there's going to be a panic in the euro dollar as well and in, and in the euro crosses. We have to know that if they intervene on behalf of the Bank of Japan in euro yen, they will sterilize the euro via another way. And in the past, they sterilized the euro via uh, German banks because they are located, their head of is in, uh, in, is in Germany, and they sterilized it via, uh, via uh, Deutsche Bank and, uh, and, thing, and, and, and people like that. So what we have seen, and that's on the other side, because Bank of Japan has mostly been intervening on the other side over the past two, uh, two decades, um, they, they, would, they would call in those days the, the European banks and ask for a price in Euro Yen and pay them. So the Euro dollar would shoot up. But then after the fact, they would call up all the, ger the German banks and sell the Euro dollar again. To have, uh, uh, to be, because the Bank of Japan doesn't doesn't want to 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 do euro yen, they want to do dollar yen. So they will 99% sterilize those those euro if they have to sell euro yen right now because they are a European central bank. They will sterilize those euro uh, sales via other banks afterwards. So what you could see is like a drop in, a violent drop in, in the euro dollar and the euro process. But half an hour later, you see the double to the to the other side because they are buying them back because they don't. The Bank of Japan does not want to intervene in euro and they want to intervene in dollar yen. So these are a little bit the possible scenarios that we could, that we could have, um, and and you should make a, a note of it because it could be that they just go and sit on sit on the top and smooth. The smooth out the the, the dollar yen rise, and they could go and sit up uh, up there at 140, and then give the next order at 141, or they could sit at 140 and just block it, or they could absolutely intervene and try to smash the markets. So the biggest interventions that we have seen in size were when they were sitting on the bid and just sat there for a long while. And I, uh, if I recall well, it's like 100. And, that was the biggest one was at 105, and they would just give. $500 million orders to the banks nonstop. And, and they were sitting there and they did an absolute monster amount. I think they did something like 50 or $60 billion uh, uh, or even 70 or so over, over the course of two sessions. So it was really very, very big. So we have to take those uh, into, into account. And, and that's it for me on the, on the yen, uh, Mr. Ryan. Just just yeah. a quick one, Dave. Um, you mentioned about going through other banks and something like the Fed. How would that work considering that the US Treasury isn't or is, is pretty much against intervention or they, they won't green light Japanese intervention as we got from the, the comments this week when uh, Biden and uh, Suzuki met? Uh, would, would, the, would that put the when, when Fed in a position? When Yellen and Suzuki met, they, she said... She's not. Um, what was her words again? That 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 she is not like really. She said in the aftermath she was she wasn't pro intervention. Yeah. But I don't think she she put a red light uh, on it. You know, she she might not green light it, but she didn't put a a, a total red light on it because the, the Japanese officials have all, officials have always said that. In case of interventions, they will explain to their G7 partners, and they will of course because it's dull again, they will, of course, need uh, some kind of green light from the U.S. Treasury um, because the, the, uh, they will sell dollars, right? So not to be seen or not to be earmarked as a, as a manipulator, they will have to do some, uh, some explanations. She didn't completely close the door, in my opinion, and, and if the Japanese officials um, uh, explain it, and, and looking at the speed, uh, they will probably okay it in, in some way, or at least say you can't, don't say you cannot do it. Yeah, got it, got it. Do you wanna, do you wanna just uh, give an idea of, of what levels we're, we're potentially looking at uh, here on? on yeah, I mean, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult, but if, if um, if if I'm not really getting senile, I think the last interventions were 
uh, by Mr. Sakaki Para, who was trying to um, he was trying to keep the dollar yen in 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 a kind of you know, my charts don't go uh, don't go far enough, but he was trying to keep dollar yen in in a kind of 125 100 and 145 range. That was his kind of range, and and we went above and and there they sold, and then uh, the the um, and and that was up in the 140s. Um, the um, uh, and and unfortunately, I'm going to say he sold because he wanted to to to, to keep Dorian in, in a range. Uh, but then afterwards, he ran into in, he ran into the Asian crisis, the LTCM uh, blow up, and which which was an absolute disaster for uh, and and Dorian collapsed the uh, 20 big figures uh, or 25 big figures in uh, in in a couple of sessions. Um, so it was a bit of an unfortunate timing that he had, but that's why I'm saying that, and that's why I'm talking about it now, because we are on the approach of 140, and I think somewhere, um, and also uh, reading Japanese-based commentators, uh, they were saying um, that we won't see interventions before 100, 140, 145, and some even say 150, but um, I think now we are close. We have to talk about this 140, 145. I think they may. There is a chance that they they, they show up there. Um, I think 150 is a no-brainer, really. But uh, they 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 won't. If if the rest of the dollars don't like fly another 10 percent, why would dollar yen fly another 10 percent in their uh, uh, everything else equal, right? In 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 their mind. So uh, yeah. I would say be careful starting starting. Uh, 140 if, if and, and look at the speed yeah yeah definitely i mean I'm, i remember trading um back in uh, what was it 2011 12 the the interventions um just before i think just before abe came on board um it was down around those 70s 80s level yeah, yeah. in the 70s that the we were at a point where they were they were threatening every day the the language was really strong so i want to on a Friday night, last thing before the close, I used to put on a put on a trade um, with like hundred pips stop and see what happened. <laughs> came in over the, what happened over the weekend or, or any particular yeah. night, and, and, uh, and, and mm. catching catching two of them um, yeah. you know, for 250, 300 pips, just because it was it was a nail not nailed on trade, but yeah. your, your downside risk was very limited because of the threat of intervention. Yeah, um, that, that Actually, what happened in uh, in uh, in uh, during the big quake, they they intervened to calm the markets because um, uh, after the quake, when it became clear the week after that there was a, a mega issue in uh, with the nuclear reactor in Fukushima, the Japanese Inc., the Japanese corporates massively repatriated Japanese yen because yeah. they didn't know what would happen to the Japanese economy and and what would the cost be of any rebuild and. Uh, and 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 what would what would happen? So they they really sold huge amounts of of dollar yen and and other yen uh, and other yen pairs. They really bought a lot of uh, a lot of yen. <clears throat> and there, the Bank of Japan and and the, and the MOF uh, really stepped in because otherwise it would have been a disaster. Dollar yen could have been trading at fifty in those days if they wouldn't have if they wouldn't have yeah. stepped in. We, we, I was there, and and to be really fair with you, on the on on it happened on a Friday afternoon. The market closed uh, in 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 Japan. We we couldn't find uh, any any rates anymore. The Monday morning was a disaster, and then they just had to had to step in really to 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 have the market function uh, because it was like it was an absolute catastrophe. And yeah. then on Tuesday we had round two when when Fukushima blew up, and that was that was crazy. That was an absolute. Yeah. It's a it's a default mechanism in Japan where if anything bad happens in Japan, they immediately repatriate um, back into yen. It's it's a it's just one of those things that, that happens. Yeah. Um, and you know, very interesting, Kay. You know, it's we've we've mentioned this a few times about how they might intervene and and what levels and and how the price action has to yeah. be playing for them to intervene. I think you're right. I think we are edging closer. Um, the the Language isn't. I don't think it's taken a huge step up yet, um, but we're. I think we're we're creeping closer. Um, yeah, I mean, we are definitely certainly yeah. moving two hundred pips, three hundred pips in a day. That's that's when we get right into the the realm. 
Um, yeah, the one the one thing I wanted to mention lastly, because you know when central banks are intervening, uh, and and especially the the lesser central banks, we we had this from Turkey, where we were wondering how much they could they intervene uh, without having extra swap lines from from other central banks. Don't worry about Japan, okay? They've got like over a trillion over a trillion dollars of uh, they're as big as the as the PBOC if they want to to. To cap the to cap the dollar yen, they can they can they can do it. So I, I wouldn't worry about any uh, uh, FX reserves from a uh, uh, Japanese side. Yeah, definitely. Right. Well, let's have a let's have a little flash around uh, some of the pairs. Um, start well, with euro you, dollar. You want me to uh, to quickly do my stuff and then and then you you get back to yeah the yeah go for, go for a quick uh, round robin yeah yeah okay so let's do the metals they they are not feeling very well again. Uh, yesterday on this rebound in uh, what we had on the, on the euro dollar and the, and uh, the dollar coming off uh, uh, after the 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 CPI and after uh, and after the bank the Bank of Canada into the into the uh, London fixing apparently uh, we had this rebound in metals as well but gold gold can't can't hold it we're still struggling we're back at 1714 I think the risk is still there for the 1670 1680s level in my opinion. I, I really would want this to retake at least 1750s to call it uh, a bit of a truce and 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 to be possibly going back up and and I think we need to get above this red uh, 1770 1775 to to call the the risk over let's put it that way for for a much deeper correction and 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 possibly move back into the 1800s silver has seen the same thing yesterday we had this rebound very funny rebound I've been as I've been telling people, I've been um, buying from this 17, 1937, I bought again at 19, the figure, then I bought again at 1880 the other day, and I've been selling on the way back up, 1910, and, and then yesterday at 1930, I locked some off, so my average is, is pretty good, um, but I I really would like to see what happens if we get into this um, 1855, 1870 zone. Um, I still have a small bit there to, to reload again, but I'm very, very cautious. As I was saying the other day, um, I'm nowhere near full steam because I don't know where the dollar really is going is going to end up in uh, in current scenario. Especially now that we're talking about 100 pp's, is going. It's it's a bit uh, tough to 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 catch knives uh, or too many knives. I would say in uh, in in any of the dollar pairs, especially that with higher uh, central bank interest rate uh, uh, hikes calls. There is going to be the flip of the, uh, the flipping of the coin. Is that the 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 curve is going deeper into inversion? The the yield curves everywhere are going deeper into inversion, and and because the market is going to equally expect that the recession will be harder because of the because of the front loading of uh, of the rate hike. So it, it's a bit well. I find it difficult at least to to stand in front of uh, in in front of the dollar the dollar move uh, right here and now. Um, let me quickly, uh, okay, Euromax doesn't really move a lot. We are, we are in this 2080, 21, the figure area. Uh, let's talk about that another day. Um, I had this uh, Canada Yen on last night for which I took the profit for exactly the reason. So I, I bought it yesterday on, on, on the break of this one. And then I sold it out this morning on the way up for exactly the same reason that I was mentioning in the dollar. And it's going a bit fast, in my opinion, and, and, and the risks are starting to mount and pile up for uh, for possible interventions. And uh, really, I, I I wanted to take the profit and just uh, move out and, and have a, and have a re bit of a relaxing time and watching the moves. Uh, the only one I'm trying now, and it's it's a real it's a real. Uh, uh, short and quick one if it caps okay if it doesn't fine i'll, I'll be out is uh is the dollar canada i'm, I'm trying to to play this uh, quadruple top now and uh but 15 points and i'm out uh really it's a short term play um mr ryan back over to you my friend no problem sir thanks everybody for the nice comments by the way yeah, great insight as always. Um, I hope this, you know, this is exactly what we want to try and bring to you. A bit of, you know, something from the institutional side, what happens. You know, it's not all about um, the big boys trying to bust your stops. It's 
giving you an idea of the mechanics that goes on so you can try and be best placed to understand if you see a market move or you see a comment uh, coming out from someone like the BOJ or, or the Ministry of Finance, you, you can judge it and see whether it's something real or something uh, not. Um, yeah, quick look at uh, Euro dollar. Um, I've been uh, scalping this one off the, the big parity level. Um, managed to get a bit away in that big blow up yesterday. Um, up into the to the one oh ones, uh, managed to get some off at one oh one twenty. I think I got it as high as or seventeen. I can't remember. I have to look back. Um, but I'm long again this morning, and I've already chopped some uh, up into the forties. Um, again, it's it, it's this is what happens when you get these big levels. Um, you know, it's a, a huge level psychologically uh, as well as as technically, and um, I'm I'm just going to keep banging away, and chipping away at. Uh, playing longs off of it but i am getting more cautious we do keep coming back here pretty quickly and pretty often the bounces apart from these these spikes we got um are pretty weak um i want to see us get above one double oh seventies um and hold above there that'll that'll should provide a bit of a spring ball to to push up further in into the 101s and, and maybe a sustained move um i'm still keeping my sell stops at uh 99.90 um and i'm actually small i'm actually bigger in the sell stops than i am long um i reduce my trade size trade in the long side purely because we keep coming back here uh, the more times we test it the bigger the break uh, may possibly be if one happens um but you know what they say a level is a level until it's not uh, so from here the big parity number is still in play um we have potentially seen we did get a break under to I looked at some of the main wires the, the, that follow the you know the main trading platforms, EBS, that sort of thing. We did dip down to, to 99 and 98 on two different platforms. Uh, now, this is not retail platform, so um, this will be, if you like, the real lows, which likely means that any barrier interest has been blown down there, uh, which potentially removes that defensive bid out of the uh, price action that we're seeing. Um, so it could be a big chunk of the money that was that was bidding down here is now gone, um, which again in potentially increases the chances that we do see a break, but it's still a big solid level. And there's, there's definitely someone or something down here who doesn't want it under parity. Um, so okay, if it's not the options guys, you got any thoughts on who, who might not want this below parity? There could be, um, yeah. There it, I was thinking about it yesterday, actually. It, it could be that uh, we have some uh, um, car makers also sitting on sitting on the bid because traditionally the German car makers at some stage, they, they have to repatriate uh, repatriate uh, profits uh, because they're also based in uh, in Euro. So they, they may be part of it, and, but I'm, I'm not sure looking at the, the timing of the year if they really are part of the, the bids, but they... It may be because they are, uh, uh, they are, we, we are at such a big level. Uh, but I mean, never say never. It, 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 it might be some some submarines uh, of of central banks. I mean, if uh, I wouldn't be uh, maybe I'll, I'll check around uh, with the with the mains that I've got left in the market if they saw any uh, BIS uh, also bits uh, in there, which. Uh, which could, well, well, Mike and uh, C. Hare would say, uh, could it be China or it Russia? Could be, it could be China. It could be, well, I mean, Russia, do they, yeah, do they still have access to, to direct markets? I, I don't know. But they might uh, give the order to, to some submarines. And uh, it could be, it could be that uh, that China is on, uh, China is on the beat. Uh, could be. Yeah. What, what's your, C. Hare, would you have to reason for, for thinking Russia and China wouldn't want it under parity. Let, let us know in uh, in the comments why you think they wouldn't want it under parity. Um, and Stephen, parity, is, it's one. So it means it's one dollar's worth one euro, one euro's worth one dollar. Um, that's what parity means. That's the, the 1.00 number. Um, and, and Mike, oh, they want to diversify their FX holdings. Um, it's, it's possible. The, you, you know, China, we... Something like this, we used to hear a lot about 
what's called DNTs, uh, which are option trades, as Mike's pointing out, uh, called double no touch. Um, that's basically when they would park barriers over a very wide range. So they might park one at, at, here at Parity and the next one wouldn't be till 120, 130, uh, maybe even wider. And they would defend these because they would, they would be massive. Um, and DNTs mean that they want the price to stay within that band. Uh, and if it trades through, then the whole strategy gets knocked out. Um, but they would come in and defend it, you know, 20, 30 pips off, off the level. Um, and if, if we used, when we used to get to hear that there was a, a possible DNT in play, it was almost a, a bet the farm on trade because they would come in and they and everyone would try and front money. So whether it was there or not, you'd get a reaction on a, on a first test because everyone would be jumping in and front running it. So it was almost as close as you could get to, to free pips, if, if ever you could call it that. But the information about those sort of trades um, is very light. We, we don't hear about them as much, whether it's due to them not doing it or because of regulations, this, this stuff doesn't get out into the, the public anymore. Um, but the fact that it's traded through by two pips suggests that if they did have one, then if they are playing that, then they've been blown up. Um, of course, they may have some lower. They may be set lower at, at 99, um, and this is where they're drawing a line because uh, maybe they think uh, if, if parity goes, it will be a quick trip to 99 anyway but that's a bit of speculation and, and again this is something that used to hear quite frequently and, and perhaps we don't uh, these days um, so anyway that's uh, that's euro dollar um, I've got my my stop up I'm in at 09 on, on this morning's trade I've got my stop at uh, break even now uh, we'll see where it goes and what it wants to do I'm still running my stop losses and, and reverses as I say 99.90 um, those are bigger than, than the longs I'm taking because I think if we get a break it's going to have some some fairly good legs. Um, dollar CAD. Um, we're actually breaking up now. Oh, there we go. Um, I was short at uh, 77. Uh, I took that just as Kay was uh, talking about Japan and stuff. Um, I have got a stop reverse at 90. So that's triggered now. Now long uh, dollar CAD at 90. I'm still a bit concerned about whether... We find, uh, you know, plenty of resistance into to 131, so I'm going to watch that. Um, I'm keeping it fairly tight. Uh, my stop loss on, on this trade is at 60, 130, 60, this long. Um, we have had a break now. Let's see if uh, 30, 80 becomes support. That'll give it a bit of impetus to, to kick on up um, and see if we get the break. But, you know, I thought we might see this yesterday after the BOC, and I, I mentioned in the room, it, it wouldn't surprise me after hitting those lows, whether we do a complete 180 and, and bust the highs. Um, I thought that might happen yesterday. It's happening today. So let's see where that goes. If we do clear 131, we're on for the top of this this trend line uh, up in the 70s, 80s. Um, that's the next big technical level. But if we do clear this zone, it is a big old zone. Um, and really, it could be the one of those cases where the, where the sky's the limit. You can see how much... Uh, action has, has been in this zone you know where it's held as support resistance all the way through it goes back years and years um so potentially this is a big big level if we get through 131 that's that's pretty much a, a one of the last steps um for a move up and then we could be heading up towards as i say this this trend line break that we're on for this uh, 50 pib, 50 fib in the 133s so a big move there uh, coming up but for now watch the uh, 130 80 level to see if it's the break's going to hold if we're going to get support coming in there um, or whether it's just going to be a quick uh, stop run and fake out um, who was it who was Anthony I think it was was wanting to look at GPP Aussie let's have a look at that um, not one I trade a lot uh, my friend, um, I know we've been talking about this before. I think you were looking at a, a break up here uh, previously. Uh, Andrew, sorry, not Anthony. Um, let me find your comment so I know what I'm talking about. Uh, there we go. Um, yeah, you've been you were looking for a break of this previously, if I if I recall. Um, so you know we've had uh, we've had, had a pretty much a break from from when we last looked at it. Um, 
Still can't get above this 176 and hold it, though. We've had a couple of attempts. It's become a bit wishy-washy, um, probably since we last spoke about this. Uh, 176.50, I think you could be okay with that one if you're looking for a break trade. Obviously, be wary of these prior highs uh, this week up here um, because if, if, if we break above there but we can't get above there, then it's going to leave you... You know, wondering what uh, whether we're going to get a big big move higher. Um, for me, it's obviously it's a pound pair, and uh, I'm very cautious about the pound right now. It's it's still not something I'm I'm overly fond of buying. Um, it's still got some volatile moves in it, but I think as we we mentioned previously, if if you're getting below the 75 area and holding below, and particularly this low, then uh, further trouble is brewing but yeah i can see where where you're looking at there so you know get a break of 7650 give it a go perhaps but uh be careful if if we don't get up to that 77s um that's gonna ring the warning bells um looking around at some other things i think stocks could be very interesting today um we're looking down a bit, obviously, this, this morning. Um, we've got this support around 3740, looking at the s and I'm wondering if, if this 100 basis point fever is finally going to be something that, that kicks stock markets out of this up and down range. Um, good if you're scalping it, um, but I think something's going to give at some point, um, and uh, it's possible that as much as the market is going to get expectant over... 100 pip hike in July from the Fed and maybe a, a faster path up. It's still worried about where the, the top may come in, how quickly we get to the top in rates and then how quickly those rates might reverse. Um, so we, we're really playing two different themes um, or we're playing loads of themes, but the, the, the two main themes for the, for the Fed is how fast and how high rates will go and how quickly they'll come back down again. Um, and I still think that, that, that perhaps stocks aren't really trading on the fundamentals so much. Um, we they, they may do more as we see more data. Is the consumer going to hold up? Um, our business is going to hold up. Kay, you, you watch earnings a bit more than I do. How have some of the earnings <clears> been uh, so far this week? Uh, uh, yeah, so mentioned far, what JPM we, we, we today haven't seen much. There was, we haven't seen much. There was Delta coming, came in, I think, average or run. Yeah, I haven't seen anything that's been too horrific. We start today, right, with uh, JP Morgan. Uh, should be yeah. out. Uh, uh, should be out. Uh, oh, I had it somewhere here and, and I forgot it. Uh, guys, help me. When should it be out? <laughs> um, uh, it says 40, yeah, 40 minutes. minutes. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so it's it's really starting in earnest today, uh, the the earnings. So uh, yeah, we are we are going to really uh, kick off uh, today. Um, uh, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, uh, and then tomorrow we get Citibank, Wells Fargo, uh, Boney, State Street. Um, yeah, today really starts in uh, earnest. Um, the expectations are for um, inflation to weigh a little bit, I think, on uh, on, on on the earnings, but. Uh, uh, whether it's now or a bit too early, we have uh, we have to to wait and see. Uh, but yeah, th there could be a few surprises in uh, in store, in my opinion. Uh, either yeah, side, either side. If, if I'm not if I'm not wrong, um, and again, the, the you and the viewers can correct me if I am. I think the round of, of uh, bank earnings last quarter were pretty solid. Um, yeah. e even you know volatility for for banks is. Uh, is printing money. Um, that's what banks want, the same as us retail traders do. So there's no reason why this volatility shouldn't increase uh, bank earnings. Um, but again, you know, that's what we're going to look for in stocks. You know, if there are if there are problems creeping in there, then if stocks start to turn south, we know they're going to start following the fundamentals rather than the, the potential re recession means QE scenario uh, that I think is a bone that stocks are, are struggling to let go of even as we get into QT and, and the end of QE and so on and so forth. Um, so stocks is going to be one to, to indices going to be one to watch closely when these earnings come out uh, and it could define some of the risk moves um, or risk sentiment that we get today. Um, right, just looking around some of the others, cable, I have a quick look at that. Oh, let's get into that one. 
so still we we looking at this 118 level that's still my marker for the downside for now 120 is still my upside marker um this noise in the middle um can do what it likes as far as i'm concerned um if we if we get below 118 keeps the trend in play we're going to be heading lower again um it's going to need a, a break above 120 uh, as i mentioned to to kick us on up um i just give them a quick look i'm not sure what data we've got out today we've got much data out today let's have a quick look uh, that was yesterday. Let's put it on today's calendar. That might help. We got the uh, PPI uh, and uh, the weekly claims, which have been sleeping and sliding a bit uh, of late. Uh, yeah. And then the uh, Wally. Wally is on later at 4 p.m. Uh, he's, uh, he's going to call for uh, how much? 250 BPs today? Or <laughs> so he's always been a slight hawk. He's, he's like the, the hawk. Of the Hawks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's he's uh, he's yeah, uh, yeah, trophy. Bullard. Yeah. Yeah. We've got PPI today, um, which it can be a bit more volatile than CPI numbers. Um, but this given we had CPI yesterday, this might just be a bit more icing on the cake uh, of inflation numbers. You know, conversely if it comes in soft uh, for any reason, because um, you can't you can't correlate CPI and PPI together really. Because um, they are more volatile, and and if this comes in much softer, then we could see a, a bit of a reverse in those expectations. Uh, and what we've been seeing in the, the dollar, particularly, could see a good bit of volatility in in dollar yen, particularly. And uh, you know, we are seeing volatility over the data. So keep an eye on those jobless claims. Uh, as Kay mentioned, uh, they're not doing all that good. The, the four week average is is starting to climb higher. Um, that's a that's a good one to to keep an eye on. Um, I think we've had about five weeks, six weeks where the numbers have been coming up higher and higher and higher. Um, not to the degree where I would think it starts to factor into to the NFP. Um, but if it starts, uh, if the trajectory of these claims starts heading higher and starts getting steeper, that's when we start to take note for the NFP. Um, Unless any of you guys have got anything else you want to see, uh, yeah, differentials have closed on EU US <clears throat> reds. Kay, did you have a look at uh, yeah, Germany? Yeah, I mean today they've closed because we are um, the market is repricing uh, uh, calls on the ECB. Uh, <coughs> sorry, we are now um, pricing in nearly a full percent over the over the next two meetings. So they, it could be that. The market is expecting 25 this meet, meeting, as all the officials have been hinting at, and then 75 for the next meeting. But I, I would think, but we are going to talk about that next week. But I think personally that regardless whatever they said, we there is a, a real possibility that ECB goes 50 BPs uh, next week. It, it, the window has never been so wide open than than it is right now. I really think they they could, and that is also one of the reasons why. Probably euro is uh, is holding is holding up uh, right now, but if you take at the global EU rates, be a bit careful because they they will take in account those those peripheral rates as well and where the spreads are going up um, in Italy, particularly uh, where where there's uh, political uh, uncertainty. So if you look at EU rates, be a bit careful. I, that's one of the reasons I look at the German rates because they are the cleanest reflection of what's happening in in perhaps. Um, because the yeah the rest is like spreads you you could add them as an addition but but okay I think it's it's anybody's uh, uh, what what he feels the the or she feels the best with but I think the 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 close the narrowing is because of the market is uh, repricing uh, ECB expectations this morning yeah um, just got a question there uh, from Merlin why is the euro reversing against uh, the CAD today um, and Dollar CAD is breaking 131 now, trading one up to 131.09. Um, I think this uh, this is pretty much part of the the yen story. There's a there's a lot of yen in these moves today. Um, again, another reason why something like euro dollar is is holding up because euro yen is is looking fairly bullish and and that's moving up as well. Um, Kay, you got any thoughts on euro CAD? Um, yeah, I think why is, that, is it? Do you think it's uh, you know this CAD weakness we're seeing versus a dollar plus the oil move lower 
plus the end move the inside of things yeah add, add it all up and 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 add, uh, add up what i just said about the the ecb the market trying to reprice ecb expectations as well so we see although it's lower again than the spike that we saw yesterday and euro hanging around one 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 double and a quarter right now i think it's it, it's it's really the, the cat problem and and likely some some um it all been pushed as well by by take profits in Canada yen, for instance, uh, which which lost which lost actually a big figure in uh, in pretty short order there. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, that's going to be um, is this there's going to be a lot of volatility and and volatility is good, but we have to take it into account as well that the markets over the past weeks when when we really started to talk about we we expect volatile markets the markets the volatility has really picked up you only have to look at option vol uh, option vols when you see uh, uh euro dollar falls around 12 percent that's a lot uh, i mean uh, if you dollar yen okay 12 and three quarters because in, I'm, I'm talking about the one month at the money um dollar yen at 12 and three quarters because dollar yen is is, is volatile but then if you look at stuff like uh, Euro Swiss, it, it nearly 9%. I mean, that's something that, that we used to have around four. Um, if you see uh, uh, the, the rest is cable above 10%, well, well, you name it. Uh, dollar Swiss at 9.5% at is, is ridiculously high historically. But this is unfortunately the market uh, we're, we're in. So. Um, that that is uh, mainly the reason. I, I'd, I'd still say in in and and also we had this test yesterday below 129.90 on the euro cat when when Bank of Canada went uh, 100 ba 100 basis points and it quickly reversed. So uh, the the 130 is a, is is a pretty big level on the on the euro cat. So take that one in, in into account as well. Um, but as we've seen in the in the more medium term. The, the the 134 is is really where uh, it, it's going to cap or if it breaks back above 134 euro cat watch out yeah definitely um and just while you were doing that i've taken some profit on my dollar cad long at uh, oh look at that managed to get the high 14s lovely um on that so taking a slice off my my now long for I've 90. um i've joined see you. See where that goes uh, from here. We're through 131, which is a, a bit of a relief because I was one, you know, been worried about whether we're going to get through that 131 area. Um, so I'm going to sit on this one and, and see where it takes me. Um, anyway, guys and girls, I'll let you go. Um, yeah, I just want something I wanted to uh, address from yesterday. I caught a, a comment just as I was hitting the, the close button. Uh, I think uh, the name was Anid um, asking about. YouTube. Um, this is streamed on YouTube as well, um, but if you if you put comments in there and questions in there, I'm not I'm not watching it. Um, I've got enough watching you guys and girls in here, and uh, particularly with uh, when the eight cat lot are on as well. Watching three different things uh, for comments is a is a bit much. So if you can, please keep your comments uh, here in uh, Zoom. Um, I watch those alongside the screen that's going on here. But anyway, have a very safe and uh, prosperous day ahead. Um, we're talking about 100 pips for central bank expectations. I hope you can bank 100 pips or more with your trading. Um, but if you do struggle at all, please have a think about coming and joining our community um, where we're happy to offer any sort of advice um, you can wish for. Anyway, thank you very much, Kay. Uh, thank you to all the viewers for your support. We shall see you tomorrow uh, for TFIF. See you later. <laughs> have a good day, everybody.